Hey everyone, my name's Christy. Welcome to my corner. Um, it's Floss Tube Friday, and if I was filming before a live studio audience, there would be lots of cheering. I love Floss Tube Friday. I love talking about my stitching. I love interacting with you all um, on my floss tubes in particular, but I mean also my other videos, but um, my floss tubes are really, they're really so good for my mental health, I have to say. So I have some fully finished objects. I have a couple of new starts. I have a whip. I have a haul. I have plans. Um, oh, and um, at the end of this video, maybe before my haul, I'm going to show you my embroidery scissor collection. I love those tiny little embroidery scissors and I'm slowly trying to build a collection. It's not very big, um, but if you have a favorite embroidery scissor, put a link in the comments below because I want to expand my embroidery scissor collection. Um, because I love them and they're so sweet and they live up here usually right there. Um, but right now they're behind me because I'm going to show them to you. Uh, I, I have some new subscribers this week, which is really exciting for me. I, like I said, in my first floss tube, I literally expected my mom and my friend Sarah to watch. And so the fact that as of now I have 130 subscribers is kind of amazing to me. Welcome to my channel, to my new subscribers and to my corner. I have two corners. I have a baking corner and a in, in a, in a crafting corner. So this is my crafting corner. Um, for those of you who have been with me for the past month, um, as this is my fifth, fifth floss tube. So it's basically been a month since I started. Um, thank you all for, um, you know, being a part of my community. This, I started this channel because I was really struggling with um, isolation in the U S we're still isolating. At least I'm still isolating and I'm a very social extrovert outgoing person. And it has been actually very difficult for me. And so I'm lucky and that I'm healthy and I have a job and stuff. Um, but it was really affecting my mental health. And so starting this has helped. Um, I won't talk about that, but you all who have joined me in this and who leave comments, it has an unbelievable impact on my life. And so I really, really appreciate you. And if you're watching this and um, interested in embroidery or historical baking or history or I don't know, other crafts that I do, um, please subscribe. I'd love to have you as part of my community as well. I, um, I post a floss tube on Fridays and then I post another random video on Tuesdays that is other things that I'm up to. It might be a history video. I'm a historian or um, lately I've been doing historical baking. I've been baking recipes from the 1850s. So please subscribe. I'd love to have you. So what have I been up to this week? Well, needless to say, I did not get everything done that I had planned on doing in my last floss tube. Diane, you were correct to laugh at me about that because there was no way. I don't know what I'm thinking. And wait until you hear my plans for next week. It's ridiculous. I'm ridiculous. But um, again, I feel like if I shoot for the stars, I'll just get some things done and that's good enough for me. I did get all of my stitching goals done though, but I didn't do any um, needle felting and I didn't do anything with those little resin rings for jewelry. I'm still kind of, those are still kind of percolating. So, um, but I did get my um, stitching done. So maybe next week I'll start on needle felting. I don't know. But for now, let's talk about my fully finished objects. I have three fully finished objects and I'm so excited. First of all, I have my armor stripping guy and he's been finished on the back. Um, and so he is going out to Stitcher Trish. I'm going to go to the post office today. I finished my Herald for my friend in Nebraska. He's also fully finished. He is also going out today to the post office. And then I have um, another thing I'm sending out. I'm sending some stickers to a friend of mine. We do planning together. Um, we have we have Zoom planning dates, so we do that. And the final thing I finished was my Lonely Mountain with my little red smog. How adorable is my little red smog? Oh my goodness. I love this piece so much. I think I'm going to do another one of them, but he's fully finished as well. And um, I did record a tutorial for these three finished objects that I'm going to post not this coming Tuesday, um, which is the 15th, but I'm going to post this tutorial on the 22nd, Tuesday, the 22nd. So keep an eye out for that. If you want to know how I finish my hoops without glue and why I don't use glue. So, um, keep an eye out for that. I just finished filming that right before I got on here. And so that will come out in a couple weeks, week and a half. So those are my finished objects for the week. Um, I did 
tell you about my painting date. So my anniversary um, with my fiance was on Monday, it was Labor Day. And in fact, it's Labor Day. So it's not the date of Labor Day, it's the actual Labor Day. Our anniversary is a movable feast. And that just delights me so much. There are two different kinds of, this is a little history lesson. There are two different kinds of holidays. There are date-based holidays, and then there are day-based holidays. So like July 4th and Christmas are date based holidays. They always fall on the same date, no matter what day of the week they are. But there are movable holidays that are like, um, in the US anyway, um, Memorial Day and Labor Day and like Thanksgiving, where they fall on like the first Monday of the month or the fourth Thursday of the month. And I love this sort of different kinds of holidays. So we just kind of made that our anniversary. But I kind of just wanted it to be Labor Day. So we'd always have off on our anniversary. So our anniversary is Labor Day and it's a movable feast. So there's your little lesson today on, on dating, not my dating, but like dates, like days. And I do enjoy as a medieval historian, there are lots of movable dates in the medieval calendar. So things like um, Easter and Pentecost and these kinds of really important holidays for medieval people were were often movable and that connection to like the history also really delights me anyway enough about that we had a lovely date and we did paintings we uh he he got me a painting date in a box um so i'm going to show you what our paintings so i did i did this um it's a spooky tree um with a swing hanging from it and it didn't originally have a swing, but then I looked over and saw his picture. And he also did a tree with a swing. And I saw this and I said, your tree is very happy. My tree is kind of spooky. So I think that my tree is your tree in the future, like a hundred years in the future after it's been possessed by all the little children who died on the swing. And so I posted this on Instagram and my mom was like, maybe your tree is just in the winter. Why do you have to go full zombie? And I'm like, well, obviously you have to go full zombie. It's almost Halloween time. So anyway, those are our paintings that we did on Monday during our date. So that was very fun. Okay, back to stitching. Like I said, I have two starts and I have a whip that I um, picked back up. Uh, my first start is, like I said, another Herald. This is for a friend of mine who teaches history in Florida. He is also a medieval historian. Um, he and I went to grad school together and he wanted a Herald as well. And I don't know if you can see up top here, there's a little hoop right here. He's going in a red hoop. So I've already painted his hoop. So that's my first new start and whip. My second new start, I sketched out but haven't actually started stitching yet. I'm waiting for the threads to come in. Um, but I decided to stitch my logo. So as I work, as I finish this, I'm going to mount it in a black hoop, which I've also painted, which is above me, and take pictures of it. And I'm gonna change my thumbnails to include this piece. Um, but I ordered an NPI, NPI, black silk to do this. Um, and that should be coming soon, I hope. So that's my second new start. And then I have a whip that I had been working on but put down, but I said I picked up again my Penguin and Fish uh, Embroider of the Month for August, which is a silk shading your suite. And I'll put a picture of that up here. You can't get that anymore, unfortunately. So those are my finished objects and my whips. And now I think I want to talk about my scissors, if that's okay with everybody. Well, even if it's not okay with everybody, this is still going up. So you can fast forward to the no scissors. Like I said, I really love tiny little scissors. And um, my two favorite scissors that I use most are these. And these are from um, Warm Crochet. And they are the Elizabeth scissor. This really ornate one here is the Elizabeth scissor. And then this one here is the, no, opposite. This one here is the Victorious, Victoria, after Queen Victoria. And this one here is the Queen Elizabeth 
scissors. So I'll post a link if I have a link to the scissors below, but I love these scissors so much. In fact, I bent a pair of these scissors, these um, Elizabeth scissors, and I and they didn't snip on the tip anymore. Like the, the tip of them wasn't sharp anymore. And so I just bought a new pair because I love them so much. So that's those. I got these standard scissors um, just at, I think I got these at Joann's. Um, they were in the area where they have like retro simplicity stuff. So I got those there. Uh, you, you saw these, these are from Fat Quarter Shop. I just hauled them a couple weeks ago, last week, two weeks ago. These scissors, I just really loved. Um, I got these on Amazon, but I love them. These are my sort of chunky boys. Um, I also got these on Amazon and I use these mostly um, back here just because they're so large um, for small. I don't really use them for embroidery so much. I use these mostly for finishing my pieces. I have the obligatory stork scissors and these are in a rose gold color. I don't know if you can see, but I got these in Barcelona in December. I got a whole notions kit in Barcelona as my souvenir. And I got this and a matching thimble. I think it had something else in it too. Um, they're not great scissors. I gotta be honest with you. They're not super sharp. Uh, so I don't use them, but I love them anyway. I have another stork floral. I don't remember where I got this probably like Hobby Lobby before I stopped shopping there. And then I got this one, which I think is supposed to be peacocks. Um, I think I just got this at Michael's. There we go. And then my last one um, I got for Christmas from my mom and it is a little sheep. And I don't remember where she got this one. So mom, if you're watching, if you could put in the comments where you got this one, that would be awesome. But they're adorable and I love them. And so like this is the back of the sheep and it has like a little face. Yeah. Like I said, if you have scissors that you love that are adorable or know of scissors that are adorable, please put a link in the comments below because I'm always on the lookout for adorable scissors. So that's my little mini scissor collection that I'm trying to expand. So now I want to talk about my haul. I did get some things in. I got a bunch of floss in this week. I also went to Joanne Fabrics because um, the my closest Joanne Fabrics which uh, for those of you not in the U.S. is like a fabric and craft store. Um, that's usually pretty good, but my closest one's about an hour away. And it's a, kind of a small one. I don't love this one, but it's right where I get my oil changed for my car. And so I had to get my oil changed. So I went to Joann's and I got some beads and then I got some just white muslin. And this is actually for making masks. I like the white muslin on the as an inside lining and I had run out so I'm planning on making some more masks this week for me in particular so that's part of my plans but I got some muslin um like I said I also got some beads nothing really embroidery related at the moment just the fabric but I did get a book an embroidery book it's not quite what I had hoped it would be but I think I'm going to keep it anyway. It talks about embroidery in Regency England, um, Jane Austen and her connection with embroidery. I love Pride and Prejudice and Persuasion by Jane Austen. They're probably my favorite books and also my favorite movies. And so um, I saw this and I got it and it's beautiful. It has some patterns. It has directions for stitching. It has some history, which I love different projects you can do with directions. So I think I'm going to enjoy this when I have a little bit of time and I can learn more about the history of embroidery and maybe do some of these um, projects. In particular, I want to do this needle book. I think this is a really cute needle book and I kind of want to make this. That is um, an option. I may not do the embroidery on it just like it is in here because it also holds a pair of scissors. So it's like a needle book with little scissors tucked in. It's like its own little embroidery kit. And I kind of love it. I want to make one of those. So I got this and then I got a bunch of floss. I got my Be Stitch Me Silk of the Month Club delivery this week, which is awesome. Um, and I got four lovely variegated. So I got this one here, which is called Evil Queen. 
and it's purples, blues, and pinks. This one is called Autumn and it's very autumnal. It's greens and rusts and yellows and golds. Maybe not rust, more like, uh, more like salmon as opposed to rust, which are very different colors. So I don't know what I was talking about. This light blue and gray is called Earth. And then I got Stardust, which is teals and purples and gray. So those are my Be Stitch Me Silk of the Month delivery. And then I also got in my order for the re-dyes of Dying for Cross Stitch uh, of the cottons from August. So this is Spices, which is just such an interesting collection of colors and I kind of love it. Muted Spring, which is very much pastel, like a pastel explosion, but in a muted way. Bizarre, like a, like a market bazaar, not like that's bizarre. So this is called Earth and, and if you look at it next to the Be Stitch Me Earth, they actually look really nice together. And one is definitely looks like a muted version of the other one, which I think is really cool. So those I think would make a really nice project together. Smoke, which is just a lovely gray. I actually have a lot of grays happening these days, which is good because I was low on grays and I think I can come up with something interesting to do with grays. Candy apple which is kind of a beiges and greens, browns and greens. Antique peacock, which is, uh, let me cover my face so it'll focus. Browns and purples and teals and greens and blues. Really lovely. A little gray thrown in. Firebane. This would make a awesome Lonely Mountain, I think, on a white. Yeah. That would be, I think that would be pretty cool. And then finally, Cherry Mash, which is pinks and browns. Those are my flosses that I got. And I did order Onyx and Mulberry, like I said, from the Fat Quarter Shop, along with the MP, the black MPI to start my logo stitching. And I also ordered some more from Dying to Cross Stitch. I think I need to... I need to chill out on the flosses. Yeah, I think I'm gonna give some of them away because I don't need them all, but I just really wanted them. So that's my haul, I think. Uh, mostly floss and then the book um, and the fabric. But I, there's, another, there's also another book I'm thinking about getting too that is reproduction patterns or at least images, re, Im, image reproductions. And I kinda wanna test out doing historical stitching. I'm really enjoying the Bayou Tapestry stitching because it's connecting me with the past. And as a historian, I really like that. And so I think I'm going to um, start to do some more historical stitching. And now I think I'm on to plans. So I have a couple plans for this week. Um, number one, I'm going to start the Penguin and Fish September Embroidery of the Month, which I'll link to below. I'm going to be doing the bat and I'll post a picture of that here because he's so cute. And that should be a pretty quick stitch up. It's smallish and simple stitches and I don't think it's going to take very long. We There is a stitch along that that's happening next week on the Penguin and Fish Facebook page and YouTube channel which I'll link to the YouTube channel below and I don't know which one of these she'll be doing in that stitch along but it's a really great community. It's at 8 30 central time every weekday. It's a wonderful community so if you want to stitch along and learn some simple freehand embroidery stitches um, definitely check out Penguin and Fish throughout this next week starting on Monday. I'm going to continue on with my death of King Harold. Um, so that I want to kind of keep making progress on that. I probably won't finish it, but I definitely want to make progress on it. And apparently I am taking commissions for Bayou Tapestry reproductions. I didn't know that I was going to do this, but that seems to be a thing that I'm doing. So if you are interested in the Bayou Tapestry and want a reproduction piece, please let me know. Um, I'm happy to make it for you. We can talk about 
how much that would cost, but apparently I'm taking commissions for Bayou Tapestry pieces. I do want to start on my logo design this week when my MPI comes in, which should be tomorrow. So that'll be a nice black silk. Um, I think it'll be really lovely to work with. So that'll be really fun. I want to start an embroidery of Hildegard of Bingen's Cosmic Egg. And I bought a large, I bought some large um, canvases. And I've stitched on these canvases before, but I hate it because the canvas is covered in primer. This is just like the canvases that you get at like a craft store. So what I might do is pull off this fabric and stretch some of my nice new linen that I got on this frame and do my big Hildegard of Bingen cosmic egg. I'll put a picture of what that is right here, basically, and I'll talk about it later. Um, Hildegard of Bingen was a 12th century nun and abbess who had uh, divine visions and she wrote music and wrote books and um, painted images from her visions. And so the cosmic egg is one of those visions and it's, and it's my all time favorite medieval image. So um, I kind of want to do a cosmic egg embroidery. That is going to be months. It's going to take months to do. It's, it's in my mind. It's percolating. We'll just say that. I might try my needle felting again. Oh, not again. I might actually start the needle felting this week. I might start a landscape. It's not really a landscape, but there's an image that I want to do of a picture that I took a couple years ago that I've been thinking about. So I might start that as well. And if I don't get all this done this week, I'll, I mean, I, I can't possibly get all this done this week and do my job. So I, I just have things bouncing around that I want to do. But I have a long winter break because of COVID, our semester is ending very early. And so I might... I might be full of crafting after Thanksgiving, which would be kind of fun. Oh, and I have a bunch of postcards. And at the beginning of COVID, I sent out a bunch of post postcards to friends and I included some recipes from the recipe from the 1856 cookbook that I've been baking out of on Tuesdays. So if you would like a random postcard with an onion, front, the onion front page, which is the satire, um, was a newspaper and now it's a online now it's a website a satire a satirical news site if you would like a postcard from the onion with an 1856 recipe on it send me your address um, i have like 40 stamps left and i want to send them out it has to be in the u.s because i only have u.s postcard stamps i'm sorry um, and i and you'll get a random postcard and a random recipe from 1856. Yeah, so I'm going to do that for the next week or so. I think that's that. I do have some news. I dropped off my most recently finished landscapes to our gallery director at the university, and so they're going to be included in a textile show that um, is happening at the end of the month. So I will post pictures when that show opens up, um, and maybe video as well. Maybe that'll be part of my video, and I'll sort of do a video of all the different pieces that I see, uh, including my own pieces. And I think that that is it for this week. Yeah, I have a lot of things that I want to get done. We'll see what happens. We'll see what I get done. We'll see what happens, Diane. Keep laughing at me because it's true. I'm ridiculous. I'm ridic completely ridiculous when it comes to plans. But that's it for this week. Please take care of yourselves. Uh, thank you so much for joining me and I hope you'll have a good one.